Giving presentations. There are five P's to giving presentations. Uh, pick a good topic, plan the talk, practice, practice, and practice. Uh, if you follow the five P's, then you will give a good presentation. Um, first of all, picking a good topic. Good topics are focused, are deep, and are relevant. Um, planning is a process of finding uh, many interesting ideas, then using the best ideas, using the most interesting information you can, uh, using keywords if you can when you're planning, and probably using PowerPoint. Um, so, um, giving presentations then. Um, um, many people are nervous about talking in front of an audience, usually because they're afraid of making a mess of it. Ironically, it is uncontrolled nerves that are most likely to lead to a poor performance. So building confidence through preparation and practice is really important. Don't do this. This is not what PowerPoint is for. This is not what a presentation looks like. Um, if you're going to read from your slides, just send us the slides and we'll read them. That's not what we need you to do. Um, there are good reasons to use PowerPoint. Some people don't like PowerPoint. I think that's the reason why. Uh, there are good reasons to use PowerPoint. Um, one of them is visuals. It's important to have a visual message to go along with the spoken message so people can hear and see what you're talking about. It's good practice. If you, in the future, you probably will have to give presentations at some time in the future, now is a good chance to practice. Um, also, I think if you're giving a presentation, putting it into this format is helpful when you're planning. It makes it easier to think of your ideas, to put your ideas in order. And then maybe later you can change the order, you can take out parts, you can make it shorter. So I think it helps in the planning of presentations to use software like PowerPoint. Um, visuals then are very important, a very good idea. Visuals can be um, pictures, maps, graphs, diagrams. Um, all of these can talk. All of these will talk to your audience. Um, keywords are useful. Um, so there are eight stages to giving a, a, a presentation. Um, it's got objectives. Um, why are you giving this talk? Who will you be talking to? Um, limitations, the, the main points, uh, beginning. It was, it's getting quite, I couldn't fit all these words onto the slides. So it's getting quite small and I could only fit six on. Um, uh, don't do this either, please. <laughs> Try and keep it simple. Keep it light. Um, just a bit of psychology. If you put something on the slide, then um, they will read it. Your audience will try to read what you've written, um, even if it's uh, a really long, uh, really complex sentence um, filled with lots of low frequency Lexis. What is that? What is Lexis? What is like obtuse? What is obtuse? So if you put a long sentence on the screen, you're forcing the audience to read it. And um, they don't want to read difficult English. They want to listen to your topic. Uh, also, um, it's difficult to read small text. So don't use small text. Um, so good slides then. Um, images are good. If you can use images, images are best. Um, a good slide will have, if you are using words, there'll be between three and five points on the, um, on the slide. Um, no sentences. Sentences are not good. Sentences include grammar. Grammar is difficult. Stick to words or simple words or simple phrases. And um, good slides don't make sense. What I mean by this is that your slides are support. A presentation is spoken. You are talking to the audience and the, the slides are trying to help you talk to the audience. They're backup. 
So if you look at the slides on their own, they don't need to make sense. They need to make sense together with your talk, but they don't need to make sense on their own. Um, so if you use a background, um, simple first advice is um, don't do this. Um, don't put images behind text. Text is great. Images are great. Don't try and put them together because it's just difficult to read. Um, if you really must put images behind text, you can do what's called washout. And at least this makes it possible to read. Um, you can check the, the font color contrasts. Uh, there are different colors that go well together. Uh, some color combinations make people feel sick. So please don't use those. Um, and think of the image and am I talking about flowers? No. So why do I have a picture of some flowers? Uh, maybe, oh, this is better. Maybe this is better. Dogs. Um, I like dogs. Do you like dogs? Do you like dogs? Do you like dogs? I like dogs. Are these this, this better? No, no, I'm not talking about flowers. I'm not talking about dogs. Um, this is maybe a better, this is maybe a better image for my presentation. Um, this is a terrible image to put behind text though. You can see it's just really difficult to read. So maybe something like this is better. We've got an image of um, a computer, uh, a projector, people sitting watching. This maybe is a better image for my presentation. Um, if you are looking for images, you can find on Google image search, there are millions of images. So you can certainly find an image that's the right image for your presentation. Um, so next, when you're making your slides, then another thing to think about is the fonts or the uh, typefaces. Um, and different fonts have a different meaning or a different image. Uh, the top one here is Times New Roman. This is a kind of traditional uh, formal font. Um, the next one is Comic Sans Serif. This is fun, casual. Some people think this is a bit childish. Um, I'm using Arial for this presentation. Now, Arial is, um, has a, a, a kind of modern image and a neutral. It's not particularly formal. It's also not really casual. Um, so it's, it's a kind of middle of the road. But think about your presentation. And what image do you want? And which font, which typeface fits your image best? Um, so when you start looking at um, when you start looking at fonts, you may think, oh wow, look, I've got all of these different fonts I can use. Or I can use a different one for each word. Oh, this is great. Oh, and I can use different colors. Wow, isn't this wonderful? And in fact, um, this is not wonderful. Um, this is terrible. And I'll tell you why it's terrible. The reason is what's called cognitive overload. Um, it's too much work for people's brains. Now, um, you can probably read very well. Um, but when you read, you need to, um, your eyes need to recognize the letters. And when the letters change, so when it changes from don't to use, um, the brain needs to recalibrate because that U is not the same as in the last font. And when you get to a T, the T in two is not the same as the T in don't. And the A is different. The N is different in many to the N in don't. So your brain needs to constantly recalibrate um, every every time we get to a new letter, a new word, and, and then when we get to colors, uh, your brain needs to recalibrate for each color. So it's a huge load on your brain. Your brain needs to work really hard to be able to read this. So just don't do this. Just do um, one, choose one font, one font, use the same font for the whole of your presentation. Um, this is, uh, this is cognitive overload. This is what cognitive overload is. Uh, and you don't want people's brains to um, explode. Uh, this is another, just an, an example. This is a kind of experiment um, about cognitive overload. Now, uh, if you try to um, read these, um, what happens is um, you read the first one 
then you read the second one and then you, your brain needs to go and read the first one again to check it's the same and your brain knows it's the same but another part of your brain says wait a minute are you sure it's the same so you have this battle going on inside your brain <laughs> to try and read this this sentence so don't so keep the cognitive overload don't overload people's brains you want their brains to think about your topic um so meanings then and you want meaning think about meaning um and everything has a meaning the images have a meaning colors have meanings the position on the screen is it at the top at the bottom is it um is it at the left at the right um think about the meaning of everything you use that you're putting on any of your slides um next thing then is um is structure and your presentation any presentation anything that you write in fact um, needs a beginning a middle and an end uh, very simply you may want to break the middle up into part one part two part three you may further want to break part one up into part one part two part three of part one but if you have some kind of structure if you break break your presentation up it makes it easier to understand and structure is important uh, there's a thing called the rule of threes which I think is that um, you need to say what you're going to say, then say it, and then say what you said. Uh, so repetition is very important. Uh, you need to think about your main points, what's the main points of your presentation, and say them again and again and again. Because um, people, will, people won't remember. Most of what you say they will forget. So your important points need to be repeated um more um simply your plan is um an introduction and a body and a conclusion now the body will be different depending on what kind of presentation you're giving uh, and you can find out about that later but just to tell you um about the introduction when you're giving a presentation um the important there's kind of three things that people need to know First of all is, um, who are you? Who am I listening to? Um, the next question, what are you talking about? What's your topic? And the next question um, is, why should I listen? So your audience needs some reason to listen to your talk. This is sometimes called a hook. So you need to grab your audience and pull them in to your presentation. So my name is Mark. I'm going to talk about giving presentations because you need to give a presentation in this class and it will be part of your grade. So there's my rather cheeky hook. Um, next then, so um, the conclusion, or this is not next, this is at the end of your presentation, whatever presentation you're giving, at the end um, there'll be some kind of conclusion. You need to repeat your main ideas and you usually say something like, thank you for listening to my presentation about... Maybe repeat the topic, just to remind people of the topic of your presentation. And often you'll ask if they have questions. There's a chance at the end of the presentation to get questions. Um, so when it's ready then, when, you're, when your um, slides are ready, when your PowerPoint slides are ready, uh, you've got a plan. So it, the plan is built in to your PowerPoint. Um, if you forget what to say, uh, I don't have any notes. I practice this. And I, I can follow, I need to follow what's on next prompt. Um, support, so your slides are support. Uh, there's a visual message to go with the oral message. Um, also, often the slides will help the audience tell them where they're going, what's happening next, and help them navigate the structure of the uh, presentation. So, um, you can use PowerPoint. Uh, I often recommend that you use Google Slides instead of PowerPoint. Um, Google Slides is free, um, it's online, and it's very good for collaboration or sharing with other people. Uh, you can find out more about Google Slides later. Uh, you can use Apache Open Office if you don't have PowerPoint. Uh, there are other free options. If you use a Mac, then uh, Keynote is the uh, installed Mac software for making presentations. Uh, they're all very similar. Um, 
when you're making a presentation, please also try to make it interactive with the audience. Uh, this is difficult if you're recording a presentation. If you're giving a presentation live in a class or live online, for example, through Zoom, um, it's a good idea to try to get some get some rapport between you and the audience. Um, you can do this with easy questions, uh, yes, no questions, get people to put their hand up. Uh, you can give a puzzle or a riddle at the beginning and give the answers later. Uh, you can give discussion questions and have people talk to each other um, in groups. So, for example, um, I may want to ask, um, have you given a presentation in English before? This is something you can give a quick yes, no answer. Uh, do you have to give presentations in other university classes? Again, yes, no, quick answer. Um, next question, what's the most difficult thing about giving presentations? Um, this question has many answers and you may want to give uh, quite a long discussion. Let people talk about this, come up with a list of, of problems that, and worries that they have. Um, so, um, when you do come to give your presentation, the important things to do are, uh, first of all, um, relax. Uh, this is, if you've done your preparation well and if you've practised, um, it's easy to relax. Um, it's quite difficult relaxing if you haven't practised and if you're nervous. Um, also, look at the audience. Um, don't look at your your feet all the time or don't look out of the window uh, try and look at the audience make eye contact um, use simple language simple is always best and um, speak slowly and clearly um, again if you're a bit nervous you may be thinking oh I've got to give this presentation but I want to finish really quickly so I'm going to speak really quickly and if I speak really quickly then I'm going to finish uh, so don't do that try and slow down slow down um, please don't these are some some things that I don't really want you to do. don't write a speech this is not a speech writing competition um, if you do want to write out what you're going to say that's very good practice for your presentation but write it out and then throw it away and when you come to give your presentation talk to the audience uh, you can look at your notes look at your ideas but just practice talking and try and talk in a smooth and relaxed way. Um, don't copy something from the internet to read to us. Um, we can read the internet ourselves. We don't need you to do that. We want to hear you talking to us. And um, don't use words that you don't understand. Um, this is your topic. If there's a word that you don't understand, then we don't understand either. Now, it may be that you have words that you need for your topic that you need to tell us that you need to use. Um, in that case, there may be technical words, for example. If you are using a word that, that you think we don't know, um, then you can maybe show a picture or a, give an example or give a definition uh, to help us understand what the word means. Um, in an emergency, you may give the Japanese. Um, but remember, the reason you're giving an English presentation is to practice for when you have to speak to people who don't understand Japanese. Um, so that's the point of giving a presentation in English. And giving <laughs> giving a words in Japanese is not really going to help you. If you are speaking to people who speak Japanese, then you should probably give your presentation in Japanese. So, um, please also don't use PowerPoint as auto cue. PowerPoint is not there for you to read the words of what you are going to say in your presentation. It's there as a guide. It's there to help people follow what you're saying. It's there as a backup so you can remember what your next topic or your next idea is. Um, and try not to make your slides too busy. Keep it simple. Keep it light. Um, do do give examples so whenever you can whenever you're explaining something or talking about something give an example that will help us to understand um, repeat your main points what are your main ideas what are your big ideas whatever your big ideas are 
please repeat them. Then we have a chance of remembering. Um, check the technology. If you're using a computer, check that you have charged the batteries. Um, maybe you need a backup plan. Over here, I have, um, I've got a USB. Um, if my computer stops working, maybe I can borrow somebody else's computer and plug my USB in. Um, and the most important thing to do when you're presenting is um, smile. Um, if you smile, the audience will smile. Um, if the audience smiles, the audience will be happy. If they're happy, they will enjoy your presentation. And if they enjoy your presentation, it's a good presentation. So um, smiling, smi don't, don't just smile, but smile as well as all these other things. Um, so just to summarize um, the main important points about giving a presentation and the things I've talked about, um, lighten the cognitive load. So make your presentation, design your presentation so it's nice for people's brains and it makes it easy for their brains and easy to understand your topic. Uh, think about the audience when you're speaking. Uh, what do they know? What are they interested in? What do they want to know? What will they understand? What will be difficult for them to understand? Um, and remember, it's a talk. This is not an essay. Um, this is not a writing activity. It's a speaking activity. So speak and practice speaking and have fun. Um, uh, I finished. Um, don't don't say I finished my talk. Um, that's all I have to say about giving presentations. Um, thank you for listening. Um, do you have any questions? Good luck.